Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Edel Metal Messe, Precious Metal Fair in Munich. And uh, it's Friday the first day, and we have a new interview partner here for, uh, I think, for the first time even. We have a uh, famous gold silver producer, Fortuna Silvermines. And uh, we have here the CEO and co founder, Jorge Ganosa. Welcome. Joachim, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I mean, your company is quite famous, long term in the market. I think you are yeah, producing gold, silver with some byproducts, of course, in Peru, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Mexico. I mean, that, that is really amazing. So how was the year for you guys so far? The nine months are ended and uh, was it fine for you? No, it's been a year of achievement. Uh, as you pointed out, we operate mines in uh, throughout Latin America from Mexico, Peru to Argentina and uh, starting last year with the acquisition of Roxgold we expanded into West Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I really believe in the future of uh, mining in, in West Africa and the tremendous opportunities that 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 region offers to gold producers, right? Okay. So we are producing gold in uh, Burkina Faso And um, more importantly and more excitingly for us, we're building our, our flagship mine in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, the Seguela project, which is 83% complete, and we can talk about that. Fantastic. How do you finance that out of your cash flow? Uh, yeah, you know, the, we made a construction decision in September of last year. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and by now we're 83% complete. The total capex is 173 million dollars. That's not that much. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a place, we were just before the interview talking about Cote d'Ivoire and, and Africa. It, really Cote d'Ivoire is a place where you can advance the mining business effectively, efficiently, and uh, 173 million dollars in capex mm -hmm. for a mine that's going to generate a production of 130, 150,000 ounces a year. Wow. Uh, you know, mine and mill for 173 million dollars in this kind of inflationary yeah. environment. Not It's many not places much. where you can achieve that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yeah. so uh, we're, we're very happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So what was the production this year so far? Meaning what are, I think you're a low cost producer also. So when you say you are, you are financing that out of the cash flow, What have you produced this year so far? What are, let's say, the average AISC? Yeah. Our production this year is, uh, our guidance is for 400,000 ounces of gold equivalents. Mm -hmm. About 70% of that is gold. Yeah. 22, 25% silver. Mm -hmm. And the balance is a byproduct, zinc and lead that today we are very welcome. Yeah. And, <laughs> so and uh, coming from, uh, from uh, Peru, from our mine in Peru. Yeah. Uh, so that amounts on if we do some alchemy and convert all of that to gold to 400,000 ounces. So for the first nine months of the year, no, uh, we have delivered 300,000 ounces. Super. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to deliver another 100,000 in this quarter to yeah. meet our guidance. Okay. With respect to cost, uh, our highest cost mine today is in Burkina Faso. It's an aging mine. Uh, it operates at around $1,300 all in sustaining. If we look at cash cost per ounce, it's more in the range of $1,000 to $1,100. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in Argentina, our, our Lindero mine uh, produces about 120,000 ounces of gold a year at an all in sustaining cost in the range of $1,100 all in sustaining. Mm -hmm. If we look at cash cost, It's more in the range of 900, right? Okay, super. And the silver mines in Peru and, and Mexico operate around $15 per ounce, all in sustaining, with cash cost more in the range of 10, mm -hmm. right? Wow, fantastic. So we could say that uh, you guys, um, yeah, if I calculate it on 400,000 ounces, if the gold price today, we talk about 150 to 200 million dollar. Uh, EBITDA, if you want to call it like that or something? No, our EBITDA margin is, is, is high. We, are, we run the business with an EBITDA margin of 40%, 38-40%. So we're looking at sales this year of what, close to $700 million. Mm -hmm. So our EBITDA is more in the range of three plus, okay. 300, Super. 350. Perfect. And uh, uh, free cash, yeah, free a cash. true measure of okay. free cash after sustaining investment in the mines taxes and whatever free cash 
before investment in Seguela, mm -hmm. so free cash from the mines, it's going to be around 120, 150. Super. So we are funding the construction of Seguela with internal cash flow yeah. generation, plus the credit lines that we have available. Yeah. So that's easy. We are very conservative with, mm -hmm. with debt, particularly for a mining company, that is our view. So we run the business with a debt to EBITDA ratio of what, 0.4. So, very That's conservative, okay. very conservative. Super. So, what is uh, approximately your debt situation today? What is cash in the bank? As you said, it's We have healthy. liquidity available to us today of $135 million with, uh, you know, uh, credit lines in the range of $200 million available. Okay. Super. So, that's all safe and done. Okay. So, then commercial production for um, Cote d'Ivoire, when do you think that can start, really, then? Our target is... May, June 2023. Oh, that's, that's fast. That's coming fast. Yeah. Uh, we're 83% complete with the yeah, construction. As you said, yeah. So the project is largely de risked, and yeah. we remain on time, on budget. We have Super. not revised yeah. capital estimations yeah. nor anything on time. So the, the, team, the team is doing an excellent job and, and, and delivering. So that means you will be then a good 500,000 house producer. You know, for the future. we are getting there. Yeah. We have emerged as Fortuna yeah. into the space of mid-sized producers over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, a mid-sized producer would be something in the range of, what, 250 to a million ounces annually. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting there to the middle of the pack, no? with good mm -hmm. costs, mm -hmm. with growth in the pipeline. Yeah. So we're very excited. Super. How do you see the development of your costs in the light of, let's say, the inflation we have today, but also in the light, you, have, you said you have one aging mine, but the others are in good shape. Now you have the new mine. I could imagine that the costs are there quite lower. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, I know not, no forward looking statement for the regulators, but what could you imagine that uh, maybe you're getting to an average of $1,100, $1,000 down? AIC? To our lowest cost producer, our lowest cost uh, mining operation will be Seguela. Mm -hmm. So Seguela coming into production helps lower consolidated all-in sustaining cost. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Seguela will produce gold under $1,100, $1,000. Today, if you look at the figures of the World Gold Council, uh, today the median for all in sustaining costs for world mine production mm -hmm. is around $1,250. Yep. That's the median, yep. right? Our highest cost mine today, Yaramoco, is producing at around $1,300. Yep. Which, that means that there is 30% of world production operates at a higher cost than, than $1,300. Yeah. Yep. Using World Council yeah, figures, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, so mm, we believe that we need to establish stabilize production under eleven hundred dollars, and that is a safe spot. Yeah. Uh, and 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 a position that allows you us to perform throughout the precious metals price cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Today, to challenge. $1,200, that means that you have to erase almost half of world mine production. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> that's that's Not the way easy. to see. <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. so I think we will always be safe if we stay under the, the world media for cost. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's where we want to be. Yeah, and that's then you are fine also with the margin. And everything that's where we want to be. So I understand your growth project now is uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So next year you are in commercial production. Have you ever thought about paying a dividend? For us, it's not a question of if, but when yeah. we pay a dividend, right? And uh, there are two criteria that when I think about a dividend are important for me. One is it has to be meaningful. And second, it has to be sustainable. And in an ever depleting business like mining, putting together the portfolio or basket of assets that can give you sustainability on the yeah. dividend yeah. It, it's a it's difficult it's not easy mm. and that is what we're working on if you look at our newest mines our newest mines in the portfolio are 
Lindero in Argentina mm -hmm. and Seguela in the Ivory Coast. Those two mines have reserve lives in excess of a decade, can support mining over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So five, you go back five years and Fortuna had a nice business with very healthy margins, but their reserves of our lives because of the nature of the deposits were five years, four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. that is I mean, That's you continue operating probably for 20, but always with five years, four yeah. years of research because the vein deposits, epithermal yeah. vein deposits. So we are strategically migrating to a different type of asset. Mm -hmm. Lindero is a porphyry, uh, Seguela is in an orogenic belt, different type of deposits where we can aspire to have longer life of reserves. And that means sustainable, sustainability on the dividend. Yeah. Because if every five years, four years, you have to be building a new mine or investing heavily to expand the life of the ones we are running, mm -hmm. that mining is a capital intensive business. Of course, that, that would be also one of my questions. What are you normally investing into exploration? Uh, uh, our, our run rate today and moving forward is around $30 million a year. Okay, that's nice, super. Across all initiatives, yeah. geographies, $30 million dollars a year. Okay, super. Then, last question, who are your largest shareholders in the company? Who is owning the company? What is management share? You know, uh, today, of course, you know, our largest inst uh, shareholders are institutional. We have, uh, uh, you know, a large uh, London-based uh, uh, institution owning around 10% of the company today. And then, You know, in this market, what we've seen is uh, shareholders, institutional particularly, retreating, right? So, um, you know, I am myself, uh, I'm a top 20 shareholder in the company, Opa. top 15. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we are seeing institutions a bit more uh, risk averse, than, which is surprising, you know, yeah. but uh, isn't surprising. But, uh, yeah. Okay, super. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best, and especially with the uh, run-up and commercial production at Cote d'Ivoire. And I think uh, this world needs more gold, silver, zinc and lead. Yeah. That's for sure. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to your audience. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Jorge Ganosa, the CEO of Fortuna Silver Mines. Yeah, you heard it. Uh, growth is one of the key factors. The question for paying a dividend is not if, it's just when, and uh, it's also fully understandable to pay a sustainable dividend, of course. Um, but what I really like is the company's uh, great cashed up. I think also the balance between cash and debt is fantastic with only 1.4. And also with uh, the Cote d'Ivoire now delivering from the future 130,000 ounces of gold uh, every year, commercial production probably by the mid of next year then. That's exactly what we want to see. And the company is well diversified in several countries. And also it's great to have the co-founder here who is also amongst the 15th largest shareholders. That is, that is what we like. You probably should out Fortuna, should check out Fortuna, sorry for that. And I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for watching us and bye-bye from Munich from the Edelmetallmesse.